Good Sunday evening, everybody, from the News Channel 3 backyard. I'm meteorologist Austin Onyx standing out here on our helipad and looking out across the area tonight. A few clouds around the Mid-South, but not doing too badly when it comes to stargazing for this evening. We can just barely see the almost first quarter moon and, of course, a little, if anything, in the way of fog or any other moisture to worry about. would be nice if we get some more rainfall in here, just not happening right now. Big River Crossing right behind me and things looking quite nice into the rest of this evening for a little bit of stargazing. If you're going to be out in about doing things. Doesn't look like too much of a problem. Clouds are going to be on the increase into the next couple of days as we get another storm system moving in and that could give us the possibility of some rainfall by about election day. More on that coming up on the late edition of News Channel 3 at 10 and of course tomorrow morning with News Channel 3's Todd Demers. So what can you expect in the near future? Well taking a look at the first quarter moon as we just mentioned riding high through the skies up above Memphis in the southern skies right now. You can almost see Mars for this evening but first quarter moon will be taking taking place into tomorrow. We'll be seeing that again, hopefully a little bit good, a little bit, a little bit of the way of better viewing conditions out there for a good view of the first quarter moon but not seeing too much of anything uh, for this evening in the way of major distractions out there. Coming up a little bit later into the rest of the week, some other things to take a look at, well, almost anyway, as the moon is going to be getting increasingly brighter, you're actually looking very close to the area between around the moon and Mars where the planet Neptune is at. It's kind of neat to think that it's out there somewhere, but it's going to be very difficult to spot it even with a telescope because of the brightness of the moon. But thanks to EarthSky.org for pointing this out and to see a little bit more about what it looks like out across much of the Mid-South area. You could imagine it being up there, but a little bit difficult to actually see it, especially in the next couple of nights with more cloud cover expected across the area. The torrid meteor shower is going to be peaking as we go throughout the rest of the next several days, so you may see a few stray meteors or maybe even a couple of fireballs from time to time. Usually don't get a lot with this meteor shower, but could see again a little bit of activity. So keep looking up for the possibility of seeing a few more meteors out across much of the Mid-South area and points beyond. Darker skies are going to be your best bet. Places to find that, again, into areas around state parks, away from city lights. Any city is going to have a decent amount of light to it, especially Memphis and Shelby County. So the farther away you are, the better viewing you're going to have. And this will be happening as we go toward Friday of this next week. We're almost to 2017. And as we get a little bit closer, we'll be seeing better conditions, hopefully a better forecast as we go toward August of this next year, which is when we will have the next total solar eclipse. A lot of chatter about this going on and looking forward to seeing this very close to the Mid-South area. The Mid-South and News Channel 3 viewing area will not be in the path of totality for this. And again, this has not happened immediately. This will be in the next several months toward about August. But as the path goes across the United States, being summertime around here usually means a pretty good view without too much cloud cover but we'll see how that goes in the next few months. Getting up early tomorrow morning, and I mean early, don't forget about the time change, kind of advancing things by just a little bit. The International Space Station will be briefly visible on the northwest horizon, heading toward the northwest, and it's going to be visible for only a few seconds or so before it goes beyond the horizon, and that's going to be right before 5 o'clock in the morning. So if you're going to be getting up that early, you may see a possibility of actually checking that out. The space plane will be going overhead a little bit later, Later than that, the X-37B, uh, the Boeing space plane, which will again be just barely visible crossing the skies a little bit later on into the 5 o'clock hour if you'd like to see more about that. So a good opportunity to get up and get some spotting done. And over the next few days, again, clouds may interfere by just a little bit, so we'll be watching for opportunities to see stuff. The latter half of this next week will be better viewing for anything involving satellites or planets, and we'll be watching that with a lot of interest. Don't forget to check out more about Skyblog3 at wreg.com slash weather. Also going to be available uh, at various social media networks you see at the bottom part of your screen keeping you up to date on what's going on with astronomy in the Mid-South. And remember, again, to get out and take a look around, see what you can find out there. A good opportunity to introduce your kids to a lot of things like that. A good opportunity as well for yourself to get out and take a look at some stargazing. You don't, may not do it too much, but a good opportunity to see it. And here's a good place to see it here at our Skyblog 3 astronomy blog on News Channel 3. Hope everything went well tonight for the University of Mississippi at Cannon Observatory. They had an observing session tonight at 6 p.m. They're free and open to the public, and hopefully everything went well. Weather permitting, clouds might have interfered a little bit. The next one is going to be coming up in early December, and that will be the last viewing session for the rest of this year. But there will be more of them posted as we go into 2017. So stay tuned for more from the University of Mississippi Physics Department. 
We'll bring those to you as soon as we know them. And also, again, thanks to the Memphis Astronomical Society for inviting me to come talk at their November meeting about weather websites. A great opportunity to learn more there. And thanks for the, both the Certificate of Appreciation and, of course, the 12-pack of root beer as a sort of honorarium for coming to talk to them. So very grateful to see that. If you'd like to see more about what's going on in the Mid-South, plenty of opportunities out there. There are science groups and places you can go to to learn all about science. And it's a great opportunity to check them out, especially introducing your kids to what's going on in the night sky. It's a great opportunity to get out away from all the technology and take a look and see what's going on out there. So take advantage of it. Get out away from the screens and everything else and take a look into the night sky and see what your ancestors and my ancestors had a chance to see a long time ago, telling stories about the night sky and making up stories about those points of light out there. It's all possible for you to get out there and take a look around, so please remember to do some of that and later on this week. Something to get away from all the politics and the election as well. So take a bit of a break, get outside, get some fresh air, and get some opportunities to see some really great science out across parts of the area and get your kids interested in something interesting like that. More astronomy coming up throughout the rest of the week on Skyblog 3, so stay tuned for more on that. From the backyard, I'm meteorologist Austin Onick with the latest edition of our astronomy blog, Skyblog 3, and more coming up at wrg.com slash weather. Remember, whatever you do, whenever you have the chance to do so, when it involves astronomy or science, remember to keep looking up.